Good morning, St. Chad's Primary Key Stage 2. It's Rev Joe. The Lord be with you and also with you. It is really good to be together again this morning, guys. And what I want to talk to you about, I think it's your theme for this term in collective worship, is all about being truthful and why being true is an integral way to lead our lives. And kind of what I want to talk about this morning is the integrity of truth. And integrity basically means doing the right thing and knowing that it's the right thing to do as well. OK, so I want to look at integrity and in telling the truth, but also when we don't tell the truth. And you might have heard of another word. It's called being deceitful, isn't it? It's when we're hiding the truth deliberately from another person, we're being deceitful. Now, last week I played a game with key stage one that's called Two Truths and a Lie. And I think that you've been doing it in uh, school as well. So you know what this game is. And I'm going to tell you three separate things, OK? Two of them are going to be the absolute truth, OK? But the other one is going to be the lie, OK? So if you think that I am telling the truth when I read these out, I want you to put one hand up. If you think I'm telling a lie, put both hands up. And then at the end, I'll let you decide which one you think is the lie, and I will let you know. So are you ready? Are you all sitting comfortably? Good. Two truths and a lie. Are we ready? Number one, my middle name is Paul. My middle name is Paul. Is that a truth or a lie? OK. Question two. I was born in Germany. I was born in Germany. Is that a truth or is it a lie? Wait, and question number three, I originally trained to be a police officer. My first career that I wanted to train to become was a police officer and I trained to be one. Is that a truth or a lie? So the first one, my middle name is Paul. Second, I was born in Germany. Or three, I originally trained as a police officer. OK, so have a little decide amongst yourselves now. One, two or three. OK, call them out. Is it one, two or three? Just call them out. Let me hear one, two or three. Little drum roll. The lie was number two. I was not born in Germany. I was born in Barnsley in South Yorkshire. But my middle name is Paul. And yes, I did originally train to be a police officer. I did a degree in criminology. And that was almost 10, 12 years ago now. But obviously, I became a vicar instead. Now, I'm not with you guys today, unfortunately. So I don't know how many of you got those answers right or wrong, but it was just a game, wasn't it? It's just a little bit silly. It's just a bit of fun. But equally, I'm not sure I'm very good at telling lies about myself. Maybe I am, maybe I'm not. That was for you to decide. It depends how many of you got that game correctly or not. But I want to tell you guys a story now, okay? And it's from the Old Testament in the Bible. And it's the story of Daniel and the lion's den. Now put your hands up if you think you know that story, Daniel and the lion's den. It's a fantastic story. Scary lions, evil kings, bad guys, good guys. Really cool story. And in this story, there is Daniel, who always told the truth and was a person of integrity. He always told what the truth was and did what was right. But then there was also three chaps in this story who didn't always tell the truth and they were actually quite deceitful. And we're going to watch this video together now. I've got another one of those lovely videos to watch about what happens with Daniel and those fierce lions. So let's enjoy this video together. Stories of the Bible, Daniel in the lion's den. This is Daniel. Oh, hey. Who was a Jewish man who was taken to Babylon when he was very young. Mm -hmm. Daniel loved God and followed God's rules. He talked to God three times a day and asked God for help often. Daniel served in the Babylonian king's court for many years. Yeah, I know him. And under many kings. Hey, Daniel. Daniel always proved himself to be more capable than all the other court officials. I hear a lot of things. Well, anytime. Daniel was serving under King Darius, and because of his great abilities, 
the king made plans to place him in charge of the entire empire. Wow, okay. The other court officials searched for some fault in Daniel, but they couldn't find anything wrong with him. He was faithful, responsible, and completely trustworthy. The court officials realized the only way to get at Daniel would be to challenge his faith. Come on! So they went to King Darius <laughs> Excuse me, Your Majesty. and advised him to make a law that for the next 30 days, any person who prays to anyone except King Darius will be thrown into the lion's den. I like it. King Darius signed this law, and once a Babylonian king signed a law, it could not be overruled. When Daniel learned of this law, he went home and knelt down, as he always did, to pray in his room with the windows open towards Jerusalem. He prayed three times a day, just as he always had done, giving thanks to God and asking for his help. The officials went to Daniel's house and found him praying. Gotcha! They went to the king and reminded him of the law. I remember. Well... Then they said that Daniel had been found praying to God three times a day. What? When the king heard this, he was very upset. Get over here. And he spent the whole day trying to think of a way to save Daniel. Wait, what? By that evening, the court officials came back to the king <coughs> and reminded him that no law signed by the Babylonian king could be overruled. So at last, the king gave orders for Daniel to be thrown into the lion's den. The king said to him, May your God, who you serve faithfully, rescue you. Then the lion's den was sealed shut with Daniel inside. The king spent the night fasting and couldn't sleep. Then very early in the morning, the king hurried to the lion's den. He called out, Hey Daniel! Was your God able to rescue you from the lions? And Daniel answered, Long live the king! My God sent his angel to shut the lion's mouths so that they would not hurt me, for I have been found innocent in his sight. The king was overjoyed and ordered that Daniel be taken out of the lion's den. Then the king ordered the men who had schemed against Daniel to be thrown into the lion's den as punishment. Daniel was safe. There was not a scratch on him, for he trusted in God. Okay, wonderful. Well, I hope you enjoyed that video. I love those cartoons. They're amazing, aren't they? Amazing story of Daniel. What a brilliant guy. Now, I'm going to ask you a couple of questions, and I want you to discuss them in a class, okay? Whoever you're with today. So the first question is this. Who in this story was telling the truth and being truthful and showing integrity? And who in this story was being deceitful and why? So who was being integral and showing the truth? I'll put this on the screen. And who was being deceitful and maybe not doing the right thing? Have a quick chat about that and see what you think. Okay, my second question for you to discuss as a class or whoever you're with today is this one. What can we as Christians today learn from Daniel's example? So as we just begin to reflect on this story now, Daniel, brave Daniel, believed in something so strongly that he was willing to risk everything, even his life, to stand up for what he believed was true. And as we know in that story, God honoured Daniel for his truthfulness and his integrity, and he saved him from the lions. He shut those lions' mouths really tight so that they couldn't bite him and have a little nibble on him. And you know what? Daniel's story, it's a really good example for each and every one of us to follow today about being true and trying to do the right thing. And actually, we need to believe as well, just like Daniel, that if we do the right thing, if we're honest and we show integrity, God will honour us and protect us just like he did Daniel. OK, well, let's just put our hands together, maybe close our eyes and let's say a quick prayer. 
So dear Lord, thank you for the example of Daniel. Please help us to be brave enough to tell the truth on all occasions and help us to know that you will be with us when we find this hard to do. Amen. And so as our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who have trespassed against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Well, Key Stage 2, it has been lovely joining you again today. I hope you're all doing well, and I hope you all got excited by that amazing story of Daniel and those fierce lions. And there's more stories of Daniel. And so if you ever want to, oh, the Bible's here. If you ever want to read more about that, pick up a Bible and read more about Daniel. But until I see you soon, bye for now. Bye, everyone.